Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why we don't use body weight multipliers in strength sports and we use Wilkes instead. Uh, and you know, that's come up because I've had some people say, well, Jason, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are you saying we don't use body weight multipliers? So could you define the difference? And I've had several people ask when I brought this up recently. Uh, so let me make this very, very clear. And this is stuff anyone who's taken basic biology knows that strength versus weight ratios scale massively different in animals. In other words, an elephant doesn't have anywhere near the strength versus weight ratio that a human being has. And I'm talking about a human being who doesn't lift. The elephant is strong because the thing weighs thousands of pounds. But the taller and bigger the frame is and the longer the levers and bones and everything on an animal, it, it tends to be horrifically different. I don't just mean slightly different because we see that in athletes. It's massively different in athletes to the point to where it's arbitrary. In other words, if you take two lifters who are a foot difference and they both have been training about the same amount of time on the same program, the shorter one will have a body weight multiplier on every single exercise that makes the taller guy look ridiculously weak in comparison, okay? So when you start thinking in terms of animals, uh, pound for pound, an elephant or a rhinoceros is absurdly weak, like weaker than a baby, pound for pound. But they have thousands of pounds, so it doesn't matter. Same thing when you start looking at insects. People like, wow, look at the ant. It can lift a thousand times its own weight. Right, because it only has to move it mil a half a millimeter okay, at a time. It, it's totally different. It has to do with the ratios of, and leverage of the lengths of the arms and legs and, the, and the, the structure of the creature. So when you apply that to humans, we find the same thing. And if people want to see proof, look at some of the strongest men on Earth. Let's take some of the, the world's strongest man competitors. All right. The Mountain, Gregor Clegane, you know, Bjorn, Hathbor. Do you guys know that he can only bench 1.2 times his body weight? Now, does he bench more than probably any of us will ever look at on a bar? Sure. But it's only like 1.2 times his body weight. Now, how many of you guys who are average height passed that number a year into training? Right? How many 180 pound guys out there easily bench over 225 for reps? A lot of them. It's pretty normal. It's common. Same guy to squat double his body weight requires knee wraps and all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay. Getting double his body weight on a squat, he can't do it wrong. Does he squat more than any of us will ever squat? Sure. Absolutely. But I mean, a double body weight squat's just not that impressive for a guy under 200 pounds. It's nothing. But if you can't squat double your body weight, you probably should consider hiring a coach at this point. Like for if you weigh 180 and you can't squat 360, and that's raw and everything, right? That's normal. I have plenty of clients who squat two and a half times their body weight, you know, who are under 200 pounds. I mean, that's, that's not that uncommon, right? It's not uncommon to have over a 400 pound squat if you lift really hard and you train hard for, for a few years for a 180 pound guy. Totally common. Bjorn can't do it. He can't. Not even close. He can't even overhead press his own body weight. Because he only overhead presses like 400 pounds. Right? Only 400 pounds. You guys see the problem? The ratios fall apart as soon as you get to tall guys. Big tall guys with a big frame. The ratios are worthless. They are biased towards really short guys. If you take a, a man who is say 5 foot 4 five foot five and he trains really really hard on a good strength program for three or four years he will have a truly impressive strength to weight ratio on the multipliers okay they are biased more in your favor for every inch shorter that you are versus another person therefore they are not used in strength sports we use Wilkes scores and Wilkes scores 
people will argue, well, there can be flaws in the Wilkes score. That's true. It's not perfect. A Wilkes score is not perfect. But it works, and it's a good way to compare people's relative strength. Because normally we would just say, well, you know, stronger lift is a stronger lift, right? Stronger lift is a stronger lift. Now, we could argue that Wilkes on deadlift is kind of silly to begin with because deadlift isn't based that much on your body weight, right? It is affected the least out of the big three. According to actual studies, actual studies on powerlifters and strength athletes done by researchers, the deadlift is the least impacted by your body weight. We could almost throw that out. Because what you usually find, what you usually find is that <laughs> it's based so little on body weight that when you start throwing the squat and stuff in, the guy who has a better Wilkes on, say, the deadlift may have a horrifically bad Wilkes when it comes to squats if he's at a lighter body weight. But the point still stands. The Wilkes is used to determine overall powerlifting totals. And it works for any strength sport. You use it for strength lifting. You, you can use it for weight lifting. In fact, they do use it for strength lifting. But the Wilkes score basically looks at people of different age classes, different weights, all of this stuff, and goes and looks at what the records are. And it tries to assign a coefficient and a score to say this is how strong of a lifter you are, giving you a numerical score relative to what the best lifters in the world are at your weight class, your body weight, and your age. Okay, so it how does it work? It doesn't do ratios, it does a, a coefficient with diminished returns, right? And obviously, if you lift the same weight at a lighter body weight, you'll have a better Wilkes score. But it's not going to be a perfect ratio. It's, again, it's going to be a, a diminished return type curve. And what you will usually find is that a lot of world champions, irrespective of weight class or age or gender, because they even have it a, a coefficient for men versus women, you can determine how they rank based on Wilkes. This is how you rank power lifters, for example, cross class. Right, because we have we have weight class, we have age class, and we have gender. That's how we're ranked. So the Wilkes score will tell you how good of a lifter you are relative to someone else. Now people say, "Well, it's too much math. I could just do a multiplier." But the multiplier doesn't tell you anything. A multiplier just tells you how tall or short you are. Right, because two really strong guys, a short guy will always have the better multiplier unless their strength gap is really enormous between the two. That's just how it is. But a Wilkes score is an attempt to normalize it. In other words, to give a true comparison of relative strength. Because otherwise, you don't have a way to compare. Oh, we just go back to, well, I lift more than you, therefore I'm stronger, which is true. Which is true. Because let's be honest, at the end of the day, whatever Wilkes score or body weight multiplier you throw out there, a guy who deadlifts 900 pounds is stronger than you. Except for probably the one guy listening who deadlifts 900 pounds. Okay, the guy out there who squats 800 and deadlifts 900, it probably doesn't matter how much he weighs. He is stronger than you. Okay, that's called absolute strength. And you know he's stronger than you. And the problem we have is a lot of times we're like, well, you, you, this person might be stronger than this person, but they weigh more. So because they built more muscle, you're, you're, it's a disadvantage. That's the funny part. That is why we need these relative scores, because it will account for that better. But to stand there and go, well, two guys who, who are the same height, for example, if one of them lifts more than the other, but he weighs 20 pounds more, when you stand there and go, yeah, well, he only lifts more because he weighs more. That is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. You're like, because he took the time, the extra four years or five years to build 20 pounds more muscle than you, that that's the only reason he's stronger than you. Yeah, because muscle equals strength. No shit, Sherlock. The guy has more muscle than you. Are you surprised he's stronger than you? That's, that's not an excuse. Um, so that's, that's the most comical thing. But... The problem is that, again, weight classes are actually height classes in disguise. And so if we want a valid comparison, 
of relative strength, we really need stuff like Wilkes scores to account for that, for all of these different variables. And again, it determines roughly how you would stack up, how what your score would look like relative to the best in the world. And therefore, it is also a valid way to compare relative strength between two different lifters who are not the same age and weight or gender. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.